let us now start a new topic called monopoly and by monopoly we mean a market structure in which we have one seller but before we do that let us revisit the assumptions we made about perfect competition for perfect competition we required that all economic agents are rational and have perfect knowledge and then there are also very large number of very small sellers and the third assumption we made is different sellers sell exactly the same product and the fourth assumption we made is free entry free exit now if any one of these assumptions is dropped or all of them are dropped we will have less than perfect competition let us focus on dropping this part and that is now we do not have very large number of very small sellers remember what this assumption meant or what it implied it implied that each firm is a price taker or they have no control over the price whatever is determined in the marketplace is taken as given by each seller so once we drop this assumption what we have is less than perfect competition and here each firm will have some control over the price now when we say each firm will have some control over the price what this means is the following the firm will ultimately have to sell this product to the consumers and what is consumer behavior in relation to the market they tend to buy more when the price is lower and less when the price is higher so let us look at some numbers on the next slide so let us look at a firm which has some control over the price and and uh, and what that means is the firm will charge a lower price at a higher level of output and a higher price at lower level of output and this is the same thing you see here as output increases what happens to price it continues to decline and this is based on the fact that this product has to be ultimately sold to the consumer and consumers buy more at a lower price and less at a higher price we already know that price and average revenue are one and the same thing so whatever numbers we have for price we can just copy them for average revenue so the same numbers we'll have here now what is total revenue total revenue is price times quantity or average revenue times quantity so 20 times 0 will be 0 18 times 1 will be 18 16 times 2 will be 32 and since i've already calculated these numbers let me just bring them here so that you can see them so we have these total revenue figures now based on these total revenue figures we can calculate marginal revenue and what is marginal revenue marginal revenue will be change in total revenue divided by change in quantity when the firm decides to move from 0 to 1 unit of output what happens to total revenue it changes by 18 units so we write 18 here when the firm has already sold one unit of output and decides to sell the second unit of output what is change in total revenue it is 14 so we could write 14 here and in similar way we can figure out what will be marginal revenue at different levels of output and here you see these marginal revenue numbers turn negative what does negative marginal revenue number means see when these numbers are positive marginal revenue numbers the way the transaction takes place is when you buy something you give money to the seller so it's a two way exchange so that's what positive marginal revenue numbers would indicate what about negative marginal revenue numbers these indicate the following that is the seller sells us a good 
and also gives us money to take it away. And this does not make sense from a business perspective. That is, you give a product to a person and also give money along with that. And so that's what this negative marginal revenue numbers mean. Another thing you will observe is the following. Here, average revenue declines. And when average revenue is declining, what this would mean is average must be greater than marginal revenue. And so if we were to draw curves based on this, we'll find that average revenue curve will be higher than marginal revenue curve. Or the marginal revenue curve will be below the average revenue curve. Now, based on the table on the previous slide, I have drawn two curves, the AR curve and the MR curve. And what we have on the horizontal axis is output or quantity of output. And on the vertical axis, we have dollars or the financial variables. Now, as you can see, this blue line is the average revenue curve. And remember this, the average revenue curve is the same thing as demand curve faced by a firm under imperfect competition or less than perfect competition. And since AR is declining, as the firm produces more and more output, you see an MR curve which is placed below the AR curve. And another thing you'll find is MR is positive from A to B. So let me just write this down. is greater than zero. And at point B, marginal revenue equals zero. And then it turns negative. So MR is negative. So based on the numbers we had, we have plotted AR and MR. And what you find is AR and MR are related to one another. And though AR is positive, MR can be positive equal to zero or negative. So we might be interested in figuring out what is the exact mathematical relationship between average and marginal revenue. And let us do that in the next slide. Now look at the following. Marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by output. And then we know total revenue is price times quantity. So we could write price times quantity in place of total revenue. And this is what I have done here. And we have change in price times quantity. And these parentheses can be opened up. And what you get is a simple formula based on calculus. And this is what you'll get. This will equal price times change in quantity plus quantity times change in price. And in the denominator, we still have change in output. Now let us open the parentheses and separate these terms. And what you have is here is this part. And here you can cancel out change in Q. Now as far as this expression goes, we can multiply and divide this expression by P. And it will be the same thing. We can do it mathematically. And this is what I have done here. Now, price can be written as price times 1. And this part that you have here, this part, this will be price times the inverse of price elasticity of demand. And what is the formula for price elasticity of demand? It is this. And so what you'll find is, Marginal revenue equals P times 1 plus P times the inverse of price elasticity of demand. And we can take out P, which is the common term. And what we are left with is this part. And this is the exact mathematical relationship between marginal and average revenue. And average revenue, we know, is the same thing as price. So I've used price in place of average 
revenue. So marginal and average revenues are related through price elasticity of demand. So I've copied this formula from the previous slide. You can cancel out this other equal sign. It's just a typo. And this is what we have. Now we know price is always a positive number. And look at the following. Price elasticity of demand is always negative. So let us just pick and choose some hypothetical numbers with respect to price elasticity of demand. If price elasticity of demand is negative 1, you plug this number here, and what you will get is P times 1 plus 1 divided by negative 1. Or in other words, this will equal 1 minus 1, and you still have P outside, and this will give us 0. Why? Because 1 minus 1 is 0 times V. P will all be, that will also be 0. So when price elasticity of demand is negative 1, what we find is MR equals 0. Now let us try price elasticity of demand being negative 0 0.5. And you should plug in this number here, calculate, and what you'll find is here marginal revenue will be negative and so when price elasticity of demand is less than one in an absolute sense what you find is marginal revenue will turn negative and when would this happen this would happen when we have inelastic demand what is inelastic demand when in terms of absolute value price elasticity of demand is less than one what happens when price elasticity of demand in an absolute sense is greater than 1? Or like we have elastic demand. Elastic demand. You can plug in the numbers. And what you'll find here when you have elastic demand, marginal revenue is positive. What we have learned is marginal revenue could be positive, negative, or equal to 0. And it all depends on elasticity of demand. And the first rule we came up with is MR is positive when we have elastic demand. And you know what elastic demand means. Then MR can turn negative when we have inelastic demand. And MR will be zero when we have unit elasticity. Or in an absolute sense, price elasticity of demand equals 1. And so now we know, given an average revenue curve, when will marginal revenue turn positive, negative, or equal 0? It all depends on elasticity of demand. So let us show the same thing in terms of this diagram. Here we note that MR is equal to 0. And we take this point to the AR curve. And here, in an absolute sense, price elasticity of demand must be equal to 1. Here, MR is positive. And what will be the value of price elasticity of demand? In an absolute sense, this will be greater than 1. What about here? Here, MR is negative. And what can we say about elasticity of demand in this zone? Price elasticity of demand will be less than 1 in an absolute sense. And this completes our current lecture video. And now in the next lecture video, we'll get into the specifics of a one type of less than perfect competition called monopoly.